Today on Broward Teen News, we're at West Broward High School to learn all about the inner workings of the School of Blue and Silver. Today we'll see a cool new way of encouraging kids to play sports. A chic fashion show featuring all kinds of underground artists. A unique hobby found in Nashville, Tennessee. And much more. Hi, I'm Louis Ackerman. And I'm Ashley Gonzalez. We're here from West Broward High School, and today on Broward Teen News, we're going to show you some of our top videos. From unique therapeutic techniques to underground fashion shows, we've really covered it all. First up is Play Ball Summer. Play Ball Summer is an event hosted by the City of Pembroke Pines to encourage outdoor exercise. They offer free food and a variety of fun activities for kids of all ages to enjoy the great outdoors. Maria McCormick gives this story her best swing. The City of Pembroke Pines is hosting an outdoor event to motivate children to live an active and healthy lifestyle. This baseball event is full of music, games, and free food so families can play ball and enjoy it all. Yeah, the U.S. Conference of Mayors wanted us to do a play ball uh, event in concert, in cooperation with the Marlins, and you see that's happening. We were small the first year, now we've expanded and exploded to 250 kids here. Billy the Marlins, all the Marlins are here, the commissioners are here, we're having a great time. The weather has been so cooperative. So I'm very, very happy. I did want to play baseball ever since I was one. It seemed pretty fun. And now I'm here and it's really fun to play baseball. Children need at least 60 minutes of exercise a day. But with technology on the rise, we often forget how important an active lifestyle is. The event is designed to make exercise fun and influence families to get out and be more active. I have read about it and I think it's just a wonderful opportunity for the community to come together, have fun, little kids like my son to just, you know, enjoy, get um, um, familiar with the sport and, you know, just enjoy the sunshine after so, so many days of rain. It's definitely good to get the kids out here to get them to run around and enjoy and, and play sports because sports is very, it's all about fun and everything with us. So, and that's what, we're, that's what we're trying to do here. The community of Pinebrook Pines came together to enjoy this Saturday with family and neighbors for a friendly game of baseball and other activities. The children got to learn how to hustle and hit and never quit. This has been Maria McCormick reporting. The Dopest Denim Fashion Show is a contemporary event to show off modern clothing made by different designers here in South Florida. These artists are striving to create a positive environment for both consumers and creators, all while promoting their chic outfits. Well, I'm trying to get a group together, a group of millennials trying to do positive things and I want us all to stay focused and because that's the hard part, honestly. Because there are times where we want to just stop and quit. We can't, we, like, we just can't get discouraged. Um, Daniel Wright, he's the designer for positive living under God. So he spreads positivity. And then London Logan, which is Jay Hollis, she does clothes for the handsomely beautiful. For me, but my clothes is like a way of expressing myself without saying anything. And so I know from the other designers, I know that's how they feel too. And um, yeah, we just want to express ourselves without saying it. I thought it was a great opportunity. Um, I never did a fashion show before. And a lot of, there's a lot of small brands, a lot of small businesses from like Palm Beach County and stuff. And it's like always a competition. So I feel like, I felt like if I joined it, people would know it's not a competition, it's all love, and we all do something different so we all can work together. Dopest Denim does mainly denim. Plug does something else. I do something totally different, so I want everybody to get like a array of everything, you know? I'm just trying to do was, you know, just trying to, you know, make everybody feel empowered in their own skin. You know, every, in each and every last one of my pieces is a different piece than the one before. You know, the individuality of it, you know, people like to be who they are. You know, it is hard to change who you are. You know, you wake up every morning and see the same person. But what brings you to power is the, your uniqueness, your differentness, your flaws. You know, everything that I make is built to make you feel like I know nobody comes out, nobody's going to come out and have this on. So I have to have my chest poked out, my head held high because, you know, I'm one of one. 
The Humane Society is a local organization that treats animals in need. This branch in Broward County takes puppies in after they've been abused mentally and physically and works to heal them. Louis Ackermans has his paws on the story. Founded in 1944, the Humane Society of Broward County has succeeded in rescuing and nurturing as many pets as possible, not only in the community, but from all over. Yet somehow they have stayed under the radar and survived by their own means. Okay, so the Humane Society, as I mentioned, is a private, nonprofit organization. And what that means is we do not get any money from the government or from any national or local organization with a similar name. We have to raise every dollar to operate. The way that we raise money to operate is through our fees, which would be if you adopt a pet. And we also do uh, fees for, uh, services for fees, such as dog obedience classes. We host birthday parties here for kids. We run a summer camp program. Um, so these are all ways that we generate funds to help us operate. Although their work is silently felt throughout the community, their true altruism shows when they heed the call of other states and countries. Uh, we are very aware of different disasters that are going on throughout the country. And we contact the shelters there in the country that, uh, in the states and whatever, where the dogs are running rampant, basically. And we go over, we are affiliated with someone with the airlines that donate their space and time. And then we go and get the animals, rescue them, and bring them here. The call of duty and desire to save and protect pets has led the Humane Society to many neighboring islands such as Montserrat and most recently Puerto Rico. And because of all the recent hurricanes, especially Hurricane Maria that devastated many shelters in Puerto Rico, the Humane Society of Broward County has been able to take in animals that came from Puerto Rico. This past week we took in uh, over 100 animals, there was uh, 79 dogs and 25 cats that were at shelters in Puerto Rico that had been destroyed. And by taking these animals from the shelter, it's giving the people that are on the island, um, the volunteers and the staff that work at those shelters, the opportunity to rebuild and to continue to help the animals that are on the island. At first, we actually used to take just dogs and cats from Puerto Rico just because, because I said they have a really bad overpopulation. Kids would beat them up and play with them and uh, they would be traumatized. So we actually had a Humane Society over there clean them up, uh, spay neuter, send them over to our shelter. Uh, we used to get them every twice a month, every Wednesday. Uh, and then the hurricane started coming, the shelter over there got destroyed, uh, and they actually sent everything over. Two weeks ago, we had 70 dogs uh, come from their shelter. This uh, past Wednesday, the 18th, that came. Uh, we had 100. A lot of them are already getting looked at a lot, so it's really good. A lot of homes are being found. The Humane Society of Broward County strives to be a safe haven for all pets from all over the country. And hopefully, one day those pets will receive their forever home. Visit your local shelter, whether it's the Humane Society of Broward County or any other local shelter or rescue group. This has been Lewis Ackerman's reporting. Zaina Zane Walland is an activist working to shine a light on those struggling from poverty and hunger. She has held multiple events where those in need are invited to come get food free of charge. Krita Vasquez has a story. Zaina Zane Walland is a passionate believer that no child should go to bed hungry. So much so that she created the Mobile School Pantry, which is an organization that provides nutritious foods to students in need. In South Florida, one in five children go to bed hungry. Um, that's pretty sad to see that happening in our own community here in South Florida. No child should be going to bed hungry with this many resources. So I truly believe, you know, school supply lists should include food items, nutritious food items, because if our children aren't eating right, they're not learning right. They're not being able to reach their full benefit and potential in school. And these kids have the potential to be our next president. They have the potential to be our next congresswoman. And they can do anything with their lives. Our bus and our pantry and our volunteers and all the people that help us make this possible have a big hand in, in creating big futures for these young individuals in our community. My grandma told me about it. We came here today. We've been helping out a lot. The Mobile School Pantry not only benefits students in the community, but also families who are less fortunate. My family should come brought me food to my home. As far as the bus, I mean, it'll be more convenient as far as you get on and you can pick up your items and you go. I come in to the food drive at the beginning when it started in 2013. It has helped me, the, my family, and the whole community because the benefits we get every month from all the food that is given to us. Not only does she contribute to South Florida through her efforts for the mobile school pantry, 
but she also strives to bring awareness to the difficulties families face because of hunger. So we are very excited tonight to be at Gallery 2014 where the artwork speaks volumes and uh, we're so happy to have our school bus out here tonight. Uh, it's Hunger Month so we're taking advantage of promoting issues of hunger in our community to let people know how they can help out and just say no to hunger every day throughout the whole year. And uh, everyone's out here having orange cocktails and uh, bidding on lots of wonderful auction items from lots of amazing businesses in our community. Um, and we have tasty treats from Mimi's and uh, everyone's enjoying taking a little preview of that bus and seeing our pictures and our sponsorships. The more people we get into Gallery 2014 tonight, the more people will leave with a new found goal to get out into their communities and really do something about it. Do something about what we just talked about, uh, take a bigger initiative, let friends know, uh, let family members know on the things that they can do to just say no to hunger here in South Florida. We're all powerful, and if we only all used our voices for good and really went out of our way and did things that are bigger than us, we really would see a big change in our world collectively. Lending a helping hand to people gives hope. Gives hope that there could be a better tomorrow, that this too shall pass, and there are better days ahead. And food, food shouldn't be something people struggle with. Now it's time for a commercial break. When we return, we'll learn more about an innovative take on a fashion show. Tennessee's historical role in the rise of the Roaring Twenties. And how Nashville business is bringing joy to the community through music. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Guitar Build Workshop is a small business with a big mission. Frank Johns is showing us the fuel of the Nashville sound from inside out, literally. Michael Rodriguez strikes a chord with this story. It's easy to work. Easy to work, sands the body nice, gets it nice and smooth and ready for the paint. Guitar Build Workshop is a warehouse right at the heart of Germantown. Frank Johns, their master luthier, provides customers with the guitar design of their choosing. Guitar Build Workshop is a one-day class for people who want to kind of learn how to build a guitar but don't want to take a, an, an expensive or a long extensive uh, time-laden course. So we try to keep it where it's not dangerous for anybody, it is safe, Young, younger people can come and you don't need a wood training background. The owner of the company, his wife wanted to build one so that was kind of the full foolproof test, you know, a lot of times people are intimidated by building a guitar. There is a lot of steps in building a guitar, uh, and a lot you can get wrong, and a lot you can mess up, but we've kind of taken all that out of it, and we made it so people can come with no experience necessary and, and learn how to build a guitar. At the end of the day, Guitar Build Workshop's mission is to push others to feel the same love for music as they do. For Bobcat Broadcast, I'm Michael Rodriguez. <laughs> The Equilibrium facility is a welcoming resource not only for occupational therapy, but also for an opportunity to volunteer and better the community. This is a prime sanctuary for horses and participants combined to relax and enjoy the ride. Dizzy DeLeon has more. The 
Equilibrium Facility is a place that allows volunteers to guide patients through therapeutic activities with horses. Dr. Fabel, with the help of her volunteers, organized a welcoming environment for the patients to participate in such a unique pastime. I'm a clinical psychologist and I love horses. And I decided to combine my two passions and I started working with horses about 20 years ago, incorporating them with my practice. Dr. Fabel combines her knowledge with horses and psychology to create an environment that is soothing to the patients. The fact that she can unite both and work with the horses or through the horses in order to help her patients become more aware and be more present, that makes a very big difference. Now, what happens is that here we see children uh, but there's also a lot of adult patients and uh, in both cases the horses play a very important role because what happens is that the horse uh, energy, it's really the energy, yes, it's able to first of all relax the person, believe it or not, and uh, second of all help them be more aware of their own emotions. So horses do not reason. That's why, they see, that's precisely the important point, because they do not reason like we do. They do not make judgments. All they know is how you're feeling. And you're close to them, or even far away from them, and they know exactly what your energy is like. And they're going to react accordingly. And there is no judgment. It's not that, ah, you know, she's feeling good today, or, oh, she's cranky today. No. They know whether you're cranky or not, but there's no judgment about it. That's why it's so important, that field that is created, it's so healing. The Equilibrium facility strives to produce a place that benefits the community one stride at a time. Reporting for the Student Television Network, I'm Daisy DeLeon. Young at Art is a facility that encourages the youth to express themselves through all sorts of different artistic facets. Every year they host a theme fashion show, volunteers create a look out of any given recyclable object. Jack Bart has a story. At the Young at Art Museum, there's a strongly held belief that art is absolutely necessary for the full development of a child, and one way to help supplement this belief is by hosting the Young at Art Fashion Show, which aims to raise awareness towards preserving the environment. Well, it started off as, uh, you know, end of the summer fun thing that the teens would do. Young at Art has always taught about recycling, we've always had a recycled art center, so it just came very natural to make jewelry and little things and accessories, and so they started doing a little fashion show and it grew into the event that you see today. It started off very homemade, very grassroots, and now it's uh, one of our major fundraisers for the year. This is the 12th annual Recycle Fashion Show and our theme this year is uh, Cosplay Couture Restyled. Having the young designers choose the character they want to bring to life, this year is much more focused on the freedom of the artist and their ability to have their vision manifest into a piece. Join Thomas for instance can tell you more. I'm not sure if you know, if you've watched Percy Jackson, but my character is the hippocampus, the seahorse from Percy Jackson. So it has a mixture of warm and cool colors and it's layered so that it looks like fish scales. I wanted to do mine differently, just like I have, um, I've done a pantsuit and I've done other things that are branched off than doing a dress and doing something that's like well known. Like someone did uh, Super Mario Bros, someone did Rose Quartz from uh, Steven Universe. Like those are well known and those are like, oh, that's what it is. I wanted mine to stand out more and I wanted it to be a statement of this is different and it shouldn't be generalized as it's a fashion show you're gonna make a dress also my model is a male so it's also branching off into that thing of I'm different and um, I just hope people like it I'm modeling for Jordan uh, it's to bring awareness to water bottle pollution I wanted to do it just because it seemed like a fun experience and to work with the museum because they do a lot. The experience has definitely been nice. Um, I'm not usually someone to get up in front of people so it's helped with that. 
and uh, as excited as I am, I am nervous, but I do definitely want to do more with the museum because they have a lot of interesting perspectives on things and the kids here are very talented. This showcase also ends up being beneficial for the audience members, designers, and models alike. It's definitely a twist on recycling. Um, you know, most of our audience, what I hear afterwards is, I never thought you could do that. I never thought you could do that with cans. I never thought you could do that with paper. Um, so it's definitely a flip a switch. It's a creative mindset that we want people to get into. Um, for our designers, it's a matter of, man, I did it. You know, they start off with a concept and a sketch and we work all the way through until they have something walking down the runway. Giving the audience a new perspective on fashion as well as saving the environment and giving designers and models a chance to strut their stuff, Young at Art continues to excel in expanding the creative mind. For Bobcat Broadcast, I'm Jack Bart. Every state has a long historical background and Tennessee is no different. Nashville had an integral role in women's suffrage in the 1920s as the last state to ratify women's rights to vote. This revolutionary change, along with others, contributes to the growing empowerment of women all across the nation. Amanda Sioka has the story. Nashville, Tennessee is known by most people as the birthplace of country, but some may not know that it was also the home of women's suffrage. Here at the Parthenon, statues and monuments give visitors a glimpse into the history of women's suffrage. In the 19th century, women were expected to stay in domestic roles where they couldn't challenge the mental capabilities of a man. By the summer of 1920, 35 of the 36 states had ratified the amendment. Tennessee was the last vote needed for the ratification before the presidential election. Between the marker 1916 and 1926 in Bicentennial Park, you can see the 19th Amendment was ratified and gave women the right to vote. However, in Towards a Feminist Theory of the State by Catherine McKinnon in 1989, she critiqued the idea that the right to vote might be actually more exclusive as well as saying oppression differs from person to person, so these movements won't be as effective. But this was the motivation to spark female empowerment movements throughout the following centuries. The hashtag MeToo movement started by Oprah Winfrey has become a new branch of these feminist movements. With more powerful youth emerging from society, they have the ability to challenge oppressive power structures and not only rock this town, but rock the rest of the world. For Student Television Network, I'm Amanda Sioka. It looks like Bobcat Broadcast Broward Teen News Edition has come to an end. Keep up with all things WBTV on Twitter, Snapchat, and YouTube. For Broward Teen News, I'm Los Ackermans. And I'm Ashley Gonzalez. Have a great day.